This is something we haven't seen before. This is Nvidia taking a relatively successful card, the GT 1030, and sticking DDR4 on it. So rather than GDDR5, which basically every card barring HBM uses these days, they've gone with system memory, which is actually a tremendous downgrade in memory bandwidth. The GT 1030 is named the GT 1030 in both of its current iterations, the GDDR5 version and the DDR4 version, but it's got a few differences beyond just the memory too, like the clock speed reduction. This is something we've railed against with other cards in the past. AMD has done it, Nvidia has done it. They've both done this. But this specific instance is particularly concerning because what you have is a device that is heavily dependent on memory bandwidth getting a reduction in memory bandwidth from 48 gigabytes per second to something like 16 gigabytes per second with some of the game performance results showing differences upwards of 2x. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, benchmarking the GT1030 versus the GT1030 with DDR4. It's... Unfortunate, really, because the GT1030 had more success than it ever deserved because of the mining thing going on. But despite having recommended it in the past, we struggle to do so now because it's so easy to accidentally buy the wrong one and really get punished as a result of it. So uh, I'm not really sure what we can run for the ad for this particularly critical video, but I'm sure we'll figure something out. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and the Gamers Nexus Anti-Static Mod Mat. The GN Anti-Static Mod Mat is a four foot by two foot surface, two millimeters thick of high quality industrial grade anti-static material. And it includes a common ground point for earth, a grounding wrist strap, and it has on it electrical wiring diagrams that may prove useful, a GPU silhouette and grid for your teardown efforts, and other useful items. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a GN mod mat today. The GT1030 with DDR4 is something we've railed against in the past, and it's because it's one of the most egregious missteps in product marketing we've seen. Really, honestly, it deserves to be called something like GT1020 or something like that, because this inherently having DDR4 on a card, it's not good for performance. But it's something that we could forgive if it were very clearly marked as its own product category. With any GT1030 right now, the only difference you legitimately see is if you look closely enough on Newegg or Amazon or whatever, you might see that it says D4 or something like that instead of G5. Most consumers are gonna have no idea what that means. It's just going to look like any other randomized product serial number, basically. So that's the problem we have with it. The other problem we have with taking a product, changing it, and keeping the same name is that it makes us look bad in media because you're going to have consumers, especially at the low end, who don't know what they're buying, see performance numbers from us, from others, for a GT1030, buy something, and get extremely different performance results. And that's not because of us. It's because the product changed later and the name was kept the same. So you can still buy both versions of the GT1030. You just have to be very careful about it. Graphics devices are extremely bound by memory bandwidth, so we can go over some of the basics as to why the differences are so prevalent here before we get into the actual performance numbers. So if you want to learn about why they're different, typically speaking, anything that is really dependent on memory operations going across the bus will be something like textures, a large file that you're pulling from somewhere to later recall and apply to an object or a mesh in the game. And these things take memory bandwidth. When you're calculating memory bandwidth between these two devices, it's roughly 48 versus 16 gigabytes per second, the lower being DDR4. And that difference is pretty easy to, uh, to come up with. So basically you take the memory bus width, divide it by eight to convert to bytes just for ease. And then after that, you multiply it by the memory clock, you multiply it by two for DDR or double data rate. And then you multiply by two for GDDR5 if it's a thing. And the result, again, 48 versus roughly 16. And the difference alone is massive, but Nvidia has also changed the core clock of the DDR4 version. So the reference baseline clock for this card, the D4 version, is about 100 megahertz or a little over below what the original GT1030 GDDR5 card was. And that's also something that's worthy of note, but not really a huge 
impact or to performance considering the rest. As for what strains memory bandwidth, it's just about everything in computer graphics. Texture sampling is a big one, or anything else that collects samples for processing, anti-aliasing, temporal effects that need to keep frames in memory, scales and transforms of textures where data needs to be retained in memory and so forth. The differences should be exaggerated in games where shaders are lighter load, as memory bandwidth is likely to be more utilized. Anything that relies on heavy memory occupancy will strain the GPU's memory bandwidth. Most of the time, that'd be higher quality textures, anti-aliasing effects, and some fixed function processing. The CPU and geometry pipelines become more bound by draw calls and geometric complexity, whereas the GPU becomes more bound by large files getting called for application to objects and meshes or files that might remain resident in memory for further transactions and things like transforms. As always, getting into the numbers, testing methodology and the test bench can be found in the article linked in the description below if you want the written format of it or more information on how we tested. Some information here, we used an i7-7700K, which is our old standardized GPU bench, be replaced eventually, and we used that to eliminate the CPU bottleneck as even a possibility. We have some numbers with a G4560, just to give you a reference point of where it would perform with a more reasonably priced CPU. And then we also have some APU numbers, which of course use completely different hardware because it's a different platform. So we've got all that in here. Some of these numbers are older, like the APU numbers are from launch. They haven't been retested. Performance might have improved a bit. But the point isn't to compare these versus APUs, so we didn't rerun it. The point is to compare them against each other. And these are the two devices that were run primarily for this benchmarking today. We'll start with Rocket League for this one. Rocket League is a fairly playable game overall. Previously, we found Rocket League to operate between 50 and 60 FPS average on the AMD R3 and R5 APUs. And we found the GT1030 and G4560 to operate at around 62 FPS average. Removing the CPU bottleneck for safety, we found the GT1030 GDDR5 GPU and 7700K were at 63 FPS average, representing a GPU bottleneck. This is with the G5 one again. 1% lows and 0.1% lows were in the 40s. The DDR4 version of the GT1030 stock ran nowhere close to that frame rate. It slumped to 28 FPS average, a 55% decline in performance from the GDDR5 version of the GPU. Or if you do the math the other way, it's about a 2x increase to move to the G5 version. With an overclock offsetting the core and memory by 250 megahertz each, we managed to push to 35 FPS average, but frame time suffered as a result. The GT1030 DDR4 card can't even achieve half of the performance of the original GT1030, and they share a name, and that's not right. It can't even operate anywhere close to the level of an R3 2200G stock APU, this thing is getting obliterated by its memory bandwidth limitations. This next chart shows the frame time performance between the GDDR5 and DDR4 cards. 16 milliseconds would represent a 60 FPS throughput, and we'd ideally see a flat line, as that'd represent the smoothest frame delivery. Or, in another ideal scenario, the least amount of variance frame to frame as possible in frame intervals. In this instance, the DDR4 card struggles to maintain a constant throughput and chokes regularly on frame to frame intervals, resulting in an overall stuttery, unplayable mess when compared to its GDDR5 alternative that costs about $10 more. Dota 2 is next. At 1080p, the R3 and R5 numbers from launch benchmarks put the APUs in the 40s to 50s for frame rate, with the GT1030 and G4560 getting stuck around 63 FPS average. Unrestrained by the CPU, we measured the GT1030 GDDR5 performance at 67 FPS average with lows at 60 and 43. The DDR4 version managed, shockingly, to carry almost 50% of the original performance. Our GT1030 DDR4 ran an average frame rate of 32 compared again to 67 on the model that costs a couple dollars more and somehow carries the same name. So far, this is just embarrassing. CSGO is up next, another Valve title. For this one, the AMD APUs at launch stuck around the 80s to 90s for average frame rate, pre-overclock. The GT1030 and G4560 did well, operating at 120 FPS average and originally receiving our recommendation for an ultra-budget CSGO machine at the time. Unrestrained, the GT1030 with GDDR5 managed 122.7 FPS average, with the lows relatively disparate at 85 and 54 FPS. The GT1030 with DDR4, embarrassingly, managed 55 FPS average, with 0.1% lows at 25 FPS. The translation of these low values is, again, a stuttery mess of frame throughput. We'll clarify with frame time plots momentarily. 
55 FPS versus 123 is a giant reduction in performance from the original card, and overclocking the DDR4 card helps, but not in a way that can begin to defray the degradation. Once overclocked, we're at nearly 2000 MHz core versus the 1800 MHz core rough max of the GT1030 with GDDR5, and yet performance is still 47% lower than the original version of the card. Here's that frame time plot. Although neither card is the pinnacle of fluidity, the DDR4 variant can't keep its frames consistent enough to provide an enjoyable experience without graphics quality or resolution reductions. Moving on to Ashes of the Singular... Uh, ne never mind. This error popped up when we tried to benchmark Ashes DX12 with the built-in benchmark. The card can't even officially run it because it's not officially supported as a result of its lack of GDDR5. Ashes thinks that this card is from the GDDR4 era and just won't even let it run without further manual modifications to the benchmark. So we'll move on. Sniper Elite 4 at 1080p high with DX12 and async compute acts like a synthetic test here. Realistically, you drop to medium settings for playability, but we can still use some stand-in synthetics, and that's how we're treating this one. For this one, the GT1030 with DDR4 again operated at exactly half the speed of the GDDR5 GT1030, further shaming the poor card's existence. We're treating Doom the same way, basically synthetically. The reason for this is because we already have data racked up for other low-end devices with these settings. Although the settings are way too abusive for the 1030, we can easily compare it to other devices. The trouble with Doom is that its 200 FPS physics cap means that we have to impose higher settings to restrict high-end devices because they'll hit the cap otherwise and appear artificially worse. Anyway, looking at it synthetically, the GT1030 with G5 manages 16 FPS average, which is 20% faster than the GT1030 with DDR4. The gap closes a bit with an overclock, and comparatively, this is miles behind the RX 560 and GTX 1050, which operate at 65.7 and 44 FPS respectively. It's probably time we start analyzing the clock differences here. In most of our previous benchmarks, you saw the DDR4 version was overclocked and the G5 version was not. Well, it's because we didn't have to overclock the G5 version. On the DDR4 card, overclocked with an offset of at least 250 MHz on memory and on the core, the card was never even close to catching up to its GDDR5 origin. This one, the first card, even with that overclock. So that tells us this is severely crippled by memory bandwidth. And using Firestrike, we can start to show why and how it's crippled and in what ways it can attempt to catch up. Here's an over time chart for Firestrike. We'll add more lines as it goes. The first two lines are the GDDR5 and DDR4 GT1030s without modifications. You'll notice that they're fairly close overall, indicating that Firestrike would be a good clock for clock test without needing manual modification. Our differences never exceed 30 megahertz, which is reasonable. It's obvious that a 30 megahertz difference will never amount to a 50% change in performance, so we can live with this. We did another test pass with the EVGA GT1030 GDDR5 cards core throttled with a 90% power limit, so we can add that line next. This one regularly dips down below the DDR4 card's core clock, but as you'll see in a moment, it still outperforms the score significantly. Finally, this next line shows the overclocked GT1030 DDR4's core clock, which was offset by 275 MHz for this test. It's peaking at 2000 MHz, which is an impressive gain of nearly 300 MHz in some instances. Even still, performance is behind the GDDR5 card, and the core can't make up for the choke created by memory bandwidth, particularly on texture filtering. Let's look at the Firestrike scores associated with these numbers. The GT1030 2GB DDR4 card is an embarrassment and operates with a graphics score of 1922 and combined score of 537. The GT1030 with GDDR5, also stock, managed a 3793 graphics score, which is a 97% performance improvement, nearly 2x. We know that Firestrike is intensive on GPU memory, and this fully solidifies the DDR4 card's weakness had there been any doubt. Just to be sure, we reduced the GT1030 GDDR5 card's power allowance to 90%, resulting in a 3687 graphics score that's still nearly 2x higher than the DDR4 card. Overclocking the DDR4 card by 275 MHz offset results in a 25% increase over the stock DDR4 card, but that's not enough to claw back the tremendous loss versus the GDDR5 device. Just in case you were wondering, here's a Firestrike chart with some other devices on it, and we'll highlight all of the 1030 devices for clarity. This is tested on the same bench and provides an easy comparison to other devices. So to be clear here, 
this thing, the DDR4 card, don't buy this. It's garbage. It's like a $10 price difference. The GT1030, as noted earlier, had way more success than it typically would deserve, but we were okay with recommending the GDDR5 version of the GT1030, and actually, we would almost never recommend a card of that low of a price class, because it just makes so much more sense to step up to something like a GTX1050, or maybe an RX550, or something like that. But with the mining market the way it was, and GPUs and all of that, it made sense in some instances to recommend a GT1030. So, we gave it the benefit of the doubt. It was actually a decent card for the price for something like a G4560. Not something we like to recommend, but given the circumstances a few months ago, it's something we had to recommend for the price class. Now, however, with a DDR4 version out there to confuse buyers, especially buyers in the budget market who don't probably don't even watch us, so they're never going to see this message, they're not going to know the difference between the two cards because a lot of the time, the difference is in the name to the extent of something like GT 1030, whatever, OC edition LP4 G5, or LP4 D4. Those things look like just, uh, just a serial number, basically. So there's no reasonable way you could expect the average consumer to differentiate between them, because it has the same freaking name otherwise, and it performs way worse. So do not buy the DDR4 version of the GT 1030, and uh, at this point, Almost just, just to send a message, I'd say probably don't buy the GDDR5 version either because it's just kind of messed up to have the same name for two extremely different products. Imagine what would happen if, say, Intel released an i7-8700K special edition that's actually it has two cores and is hyper-threaded and that's it. Or if AMD released an R7-1700V2 that's an R3 product. It's, it's an extreme, it's a, that big of a difference because the memory bandwidth dictates everything for the performance of these low-end devices especially. So uh, we take issue with it and would encourage you not to buy this garbage product with DDR4 memory. But otherwise, if you're curious about the performance, you've got it now, and hopefully NVIDIA considers renaming it something like GT1020 or literally anything else that's not already used. So that's it. As always, if you want to support us so that we can continue buying things that vendors definitely won't send us, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net and pick up one of our mod mats. The next round will be in shortly. Or go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus for a smaller contribution and to join our Discord server. Subscribe for more as always. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.